rich and frank exchange with all our interlocutors. It regrets that the Prime Minister, government ministers, police representatives, the Supreme Court prosecutor and other officials were unavailable. Although Greece has a solid institutional and legal framework, a vibrant civil society and independent media, the delegation notes that there are very serious threats to the rule of law and fundamental rights. Checks and balances essential for a robust democracy are under heavy pressure. Scrutiny by dedicated bodies and free press is hollowed out. Justice is extremely slow and ineffective, leading to a culture of impunity. Corruption is eroding public services and goods. Nearly two years after the murder of Yorgos Karaivas, there is no visible progress in the police investigation. Not only is no justice done to his family, but it sends a message that safety of journalists is no priority for the government. The case must be investigated without further delay, and the delegation urges the authorities to request assistance from Europol. In addition, many journalists are confronted with physical threats, verbal attacks, violation of their privacy with spyware or slaps. Media ownership by a small number of oligarchs negatively impacts media freedom and pluralism, resulting sometimes in dramatic underreporting on certain topics. In the aftermath of the train accident, a common statement by Greek media organizations also highlighted this problem. The delegation expresses concern about the underfunding, understaffing, curtailing of powers, opaque appointment procedures and harassment and intimidation of officials of independent, independent public bodies, such as the Ombudsman, the Data Protection Authority and the Authority for Communication Security and Privacy, ADAE. The delegation furthermore notes that the National Transparency Agency, which should play a vital role in scrutinizing public authorities, does not seem to be effective. The ongoing harassment of anti-corruption prosecutor Tulupaki is also cause for grave concern. The length of judicial proceedings, compound with doubts over the integrity of parts of the police force, leads to a culture of impunity where corruption can thrive. These issues must be remedied as a matter of priority. The treatment of migrants at the external borders and, dom and domestically, including reports about pushbacks, violence, arbitrary detention and theft of their belongings, is highly unsettling. The restrictions imposed on monitoring and reporting by NGOs and journalists on migration situations should be lifted immediately. All initiatives contributing to more transparency, such as the pushback reporting mechanism by the Human Rights Commission, must be embraced and enhanced. With regard to equal treatment, Greece has a solid legal framework and the creation of the new Human Rights Commission is a positive step. However, the practice is very different for, for example, LGBTI people, Roma people and women. The delegation calls on all political forces to show leadership and promote societal change. Particular issues to be addressed are domestic violence, police violence and marriage equality. Finally, the legislative process needs to be improved by introducing real and meaningful consultation and by abolishing the controversial practice of omnibus legislation. And then, all I wanted to say is a very big thank you to uh, all the staff of the office, the staff of the delegation and the interpreters who've done an amazing job. Uh, and I think you have made this visit uh, to a very big success. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we will now take some questions. I would like to kindly ask you to state your name and medium uh, before uh, submitting your question to the chair. Thank you. Nectaria Stamouli from Politico. I would like to ask, considering the fact that you didn't see any government officials and uh, considering the fact that you mentioned a number of warn warnings, 
Uh, how do you plan to proceed? Do you plan a follow-up visit? Do you plan to issue a report? What are the next steps? And if there's something that uh, you think the European Parliament can actually do to improve the situation that you described. Uh, is there, maybe we'll take another question and you can answer. Is there any other question we can take at this stage? Uh, yes, please. That's the from Said story. I would like to ask you, when exactly did the police, and especially the judiciary, the uh, prosecutor of the High Court, inform you that he was not going uh, to meet you? In addition to this question, Kaki Bali from Avgi, I would like to ask you, uh, did you have the idea that it was a deal between the Greek government and the persecutor not to come and see you? Okay, let's start with those. Three. Okay, let me let me take them in inverse order. Uh, uh, as to the, uh, the the last question, I think that's a question you should put to them. We have extended an invitation, um, and they accept or don't. Uh, as to the cancellation, I don't know the exact time. I would have to check with the secretariat, but it was very last moment. Um, and uh, as to further steps, uh, yes, we will report back to, uh, to Parliament. I mean, I have, as, a, as the chair of the Democracy, Rule of Law and Fundamental Rights Monitoring Group, I, I always report regularly uh, to LIBE on all our activities, but there will also be a specific uh, mission report. Uh, and when we return to Brussels, we will see if, if any other follow-up should be considered uh, maybe in the form of a, of a debate or uh, a resolution, but that will have to be discussed uh, when we're back. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this stage? Yes, please. Hello. Uh, Yanis Meonidis from CNN Greece. Uh, how necessary was it for your visit to take place uh, this week, because of the rail crash that uh, took place last week, uh, could it have been postponed for next week or for two weeks later so that government officials wouldn't have any sort of excuse uh, not to, to see you? Well, you know, this, this mission uh, has been planned uh, months ago. Um, the, the presidency of the European Parliament last week uh, considered uh, took a vote even uh, and decided that it was uh, appropriate to go ahead. I also feel, having been here and having spoken to people, having met people, that that was the, the right decision. Um, you know, for, as I said earlier, we have invited a number of people. It is for them to, to, um, to decide whether or not to accept and, uh, and, and they should answer why they didn't accept. That's, that's not for me to say. Thank you, Chair. Uh, do we have any other questions? Yes, please. Description on pressures on independent authorities you've cited and other very serious issues you have described. Is there a possibility you have considered or you're going to consider recommending in your mission report uh, the consideration of rule of law conditionality procedures? Uh, or you would consider them uh, open because of the evidence you have uh, gathered during your trip? Well, as I, as I said also to your colleague, uh, we will see exactly what, uh, what follow-up there will be. Uh, and I have I've mentioned a range of uh, issues where uh, we have concerns and we will see what kind of recommendations we will come up with. Uh, the, the conditionality mechanism is, um, let's say, at least in first instance, um, something that the, the European Commission is governing, but uh, we have concerns. I mean, I think that's the most important uh, conclusion at this point in time. We have spoken to a number of uh, independent bodies, scrutiny bodies who play a vital role in democracy because, you know, I, I, I firmly believe that checks and balances is the very, the very core, the very essence of democracy, powers and countervailing powers. And if uh, countervailing powers, be they independent bodies or be they free media or civil society, uh, if they are weakened, uh, eroded, if their independence is, uh, is under pressure, then, then that's a threat to, to democracy and the rule of law. Um, and, and yes, we will flag it up in what form and with what kind of 
consequences we'll see. I think it is important to, uh, uh, to conclude that this is happening. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions in the room? No? Okay, so I guess this means this press conference is concluded. Thank you very much. The members will be in the room for a bit longer if you need to talk to them. Thank you.